UINR's The Mi'kmaq Voice on stewardship management and research on natural resources and environment in Unamagi. We represent Eskasoni, Member 2, Budladek, Wakeabaw, and Wagbakuk. Lisa Young, Executive Director at UINR. Charlie Dennis, Senior Advisor for the Unamagi Institute of Natural Resources. Annie Johnson, Director of Administration at UINR. At UINR, we work on issues that are relevant to our communities. We engage with the communities on a number of levels through our elders' meetings, our regular board meetings with the chiefs. Terry Paul, and I'm the chief of member two, the chiefs being the board at the, the UINR, showed everybody that, uh, you know, we support it and proven it that we are committed to it by being on the board and being very active. They're connected to their communities. They sit on our board. They bring the concerns of their communities to us. We also have meetings regularly with our fishers, our hunters, and our gatherers. The issues that we work on come right from our communities. The Mi'kmaq way has a spiritual element that ties us to the plants, animals, and the whole environment. We speak for species that can't speak for themselves. UNR's strength is an in integrating scientific research with traditional Mi'kmaq knowledge. To white seeing. Shelly Denning, I'm the Director of Research and Stewardship at UNR. Cheryl Bartlett, Cape Breton University. Many of the things that are near and dear to the uh, heart of the projects that I've been doing at the university are shared by what UINR would like to see happen, and that's a, a coming together of the Aboriginal traditional knowledge and the Western sciences. A lot of our products have been developed around that idea. Lobster, for example, it's voluntary. It's it's um, you know things that you can do to, to help enhance lobster populations in the Bredore. We've done work with uh, eels, promoting uh, Mi'kmaq traditional values and practices for eel conservation. With uh, salmon right now, we're concentrating a lot on research. We're trying to do things together from what Elder Albert refers to as a two-eyed seeing approach. Two-eyed seeing implies or gently reminds us how interdependent and interconnected we are. It's a guiding principle of how we should live. UINR has been the most important partner that I have worked with within my integrative science research program over the years. Nedugulink is at the heart of everything we do at UINR. Nedugulink is the use of natural bounty. The support and well-being of you and your community. Nedugulink means having community nutrition and economic well-being without jeopardizing the environment. As Mi'kmaq, we have the right to access and use our resources and the responsibility to use them sustainably. We work so that future generations will enjoy the beauty and bounty that nourished our people emotionally and physically for thousands of years. My name is Tom I'm Sol, and I'm the Director of Negotiations with the Nova Scotia Office of Aboriginal Affairs. Eric Shiley, Associate Negotiator, KMKNO. Derek Kwan, Resource Conservation Manager with Cape Breton Highlands National Park. Clifford Paul, Coordinator of the Moose Management Initiative. It's hard not to talk about collaborative management at UINR without talking about the Moose Management Initiative. We are working on a comprehensive management plan for moose and moose habitat, which involves Mi'kmaq government, the provincial government and the federal government. It is the first of its kind in this region, probably in Canada. We're looking at this management plan as a model for resource management of species, including aquatic species that we can use in the future. Provincial and the federal government and, and UINR and other Mi'kmaq representatives are, are, are working very well together. We are the people who are on the on the ground stewards. Of, of what happens and we see each other that way and we really try to make things work. Without uh, UINR there is no possible way that our office could have looked at what we've done in the moose management. None of that would have ever happened without UINR. We also have a commercial fisheries liaison coordinator that liaises with each of our member communities. John Couture, I'm the commercial fisheries liaison coordinator for UINR. I attend all DFO's resource meetings, uh, science meetings, peer reviews, industry related meetings and I, I go on behalf of the communities. Basically, I'm the eyes and the ears, a resource to go out on their behalf and to seek out information and to seek solutions, to acquire information uh, so that I can answer the questions that I know I'm gonna hear when I get back to the communities. We work closely with the guardians in each of the communities, and they are right on the ground. Lance Paul, member two, fishery guardian. Tracy Gugu, I'm the guardian coordinator of Wigalma First Nation. Norman Bass, Bodledek First Nation, fishery guardian. Anthony Pirro. I live in Wamukuk, manager for the Guardian program down here. Keith Christmas, and I'm the Unumagi Guardian Coordinator. The Guardians are important because they are a direct link to the community and the community members. We uh, work uh, very close with the uh, fishery officer. Monitor the food fishery. Inspecting boats, check their tags. Fish for our elders. We develop new programs for children. Water sampling. Protection of the environment. Also clean our river. We've learned a lot from UINR. The gardening coordinator just helps us uh, 
uh, be more aware of, of projects that are coming up, uh, training opportunities that are available. To me, it's sort of a, a, the head of communications for, for all the Guardians. Mark McPhail, I'm the Director of Forestry at UINR. The lion's share of the work I do is field work, taking care of the contractors, the harvesting contractors. We're involved with the private civil culture program, supervising the Crown civil culture crew, as well as, of course, harvesting. Forest is a very critical component. It's true forest that not only provides us the clean air, the clean drinking water and the fertile soil, but it also provides us food, dwelling, and medicines. One of the more significant projects UINR has been involved with is a Salmon River Restoration Project. We decided that uh, we were going to go and we we're going to plant Acadian species in these areas that were degraded. We went out over a two-day period and we planted along the Margarine and Middle River. Rain Marshall, UINR. I do water quality. As a monitor, my activities include collecting samples in the field. She does water quality testing on it right here in, in our labs in Eskasoni. And what we test for is we test for coliform bacteria. While I'm there, I also check to see that the chlorine is being put into the to the system. That information is uploaded to a central database at Health Canada. The job that I do is important because of safe drinking water within our communities. We take our responsibility for the natural environment seriously. Marine science research. Species management. Forestry. Water quality monitoring. And environmental partnerships are among our responsibilities. René Lavoie, scientist emeritus, Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Dan Christmas, I'm a senior advisor for member two. Chairman Monroe, Nova Scotia Environment. Shelley Porter, one of the coordinators of the Bredore Lakes Collaborative Environmental Planning Initiative, the CEPI. UNR played a key role in the development of CEPI. We had to develop partnerships with the federal government, with the provincial government, and with the municipalities. UINR approached the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans and, and various departments in the provinces about concerns of water quality in the Bredor Lakes. And that's how CEPI was born. It became a partnership between the provincial government, the federal government, municipalities and the Mi'kmaq. Three federal government departments. Four provincial departments. Five municipalities. Five First Nation chiefs on agreed to sign the charter. Also recently, Parks Canada has joined our senior council. One of CEPI's strengths is the, is the building of the partnerships, again facilitated by UINR. We refer to UINR usually as the host of the CEPI. They do uh, our administrative work. Um, we use their staff sometimes, the staff expertise. It's an exchange of skills and knowledge. May Rowe, Cape Breton Regional Municipality. Charles Blaise Young, I've been with the council for the last Six turfs now, I represent this because as Mass Molly was. Bidoba is a unique partnership. I dare say there's probably not a partnership like it in all of Canada. Bidoba um, represents the five First Nations. It also represents the municipal all the municipalities on the island. It brings First Nations people and municipalities together to work on issues of mutual concern, water and wastewater um, management and infrastructure. The Mi'kmaq word for, for the Bredore Lakes is Bidoba. And what Bidoba loosely translates is flowing into oneness. So it really describes how a watershed works. From an environment's perspective, there are no boundaries. But there are always opportunities to collaborate and to engage and to work with others. And I think both Bidoba and CEPI and UINR, certainly with its um, partnerships, um, have brought to life that, that need to work together. UINR opened up the gates for me with, with CEPI and Bidoba. It's all about the same, same thing. It's a protection of the Bedore Lake. Lewis Hinks, I'm Program Director for the Atlantic Salmon Federation here in Nova Scotia. John Hart, I'm President of the Mercury Salmon Association, Director of the Nova Scotia Salmon Association, and one of the founding members of the CSI Cape Breton. CSI was developed from a, a, a willingness and a desire, I guess, and a, and a need in some ways for First Nations and non-Aboriginal groups to work together for Atlantic Salmon. It's allowed us to see things from First Nations perspective. We have tried to show them things from our perspective and it's been a mutual education for everyone. Without a doubt in my mind that one of the biggest successes is, is the, the open lines of communications that we've built through this. UNR has done a fantastic job over the years. Positive from my perspective. Education, cooperation, collaboration. One of our partnerships at UINR that's fairly new is with the Mi'kmaq Environmental Learning Center, or MILC. Nadine Lafort, I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator with the Mi'kmaq Environmental Learning Center. MILC uh, facilitates workshops. We often draw upon UINR for their expertise. MILC can bring the knowledge that UINR is researching, is working on in the forest or in the lakes 
or on the land or with water, and we can bring that information to students, to parents, to teachers, and to community members. Parks Canada, Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada, Health Canada, Transport Canada, Environment Canada, the Provincial Department of Natural Resources, Nova Scotia Environment, the Nova Scotia Fisheries and Agriculture, Nova Scotia Office of Aboriginal Affairs, KMK, Cape Breton University, Nova Forest Alliance, Atlantic Salmon Conservation Foundation, CMM, DFO, they provide us our core funding. I'm Weldon Bone and I'm the Director of Communication at UINR. My job is to let people know about the great work we do here. We do that through our newsletter, the UINR Martin which comes out quarterly, our website, uinr.ca, Facebook, Twitter, and a host of other videos, publications, maps, and reports. We do important work at UINR, and we want everyone to know about it. UINR gives us that collective voice of five First Nations. I believe it's, uh, it's a godsend to, uh, to our people. I tell my friends, I go to work every day and I save the world. And what could be, you know, what could be a more rewarding job than that?